Hey friends, Jessica here with Creators Couture and I'm back in the new year with a fresh tutorial and today we're going to make this easy peasy little embroidered flower um, motif and this is really really easy thanks to the new embroidery brushes, embroidery magic that I literally spent years developing to try to get these realistic embroidered effects. So I'm just going to show you some of the brushes here and they are so much fun to work with. I'll put the link down below and I just made it so fun and easy to create these really amazing embroidered sort of effects. So we're going to get straight into it. So I'm going to go ahead and this is my reference flower. This is the one that I made before. And what I did was I went ahead and preloaded some brushes with color with the um, uh, embroidery threads. And here you can get a little preview of the brushes that we're going to use. So I'm going to just pop this one over here for my reference. And um, if you have any questions about this uh, technique, or if I go a little fast on this video, I'll link the foundation tutorial down below. But I'm not going to take time to um, do all everything bit by bit because I want to get through this really fast so you guys can start having fun. But I've got a great foundation tutorial if it's a little bit fast. So here I've got my, um, my palette, my thread palette. Here I've got my reference and here I've got my starter file. Now, if you are a subscriber on Behance, you can download my all the files for this and even you can download, I made a special, the loaded brushes. So you can just go ahead and try this out yourself and it makes it a little bit more fun. So of course you can get the brushes um, on my website, but I like to give little extras to my Behance subscribers. So you can download all the source files and all of that. So have a little bit of fun. So the first thing I'm going to do is make the base of the flower and I've got my little sketch layer here and let's go ahead and I, um, I have all the brushes here like in my brush panel and you can see there's a ton of them. I think it's like, oh my gosh, I don't even remember how many embroidery brushes are, but there's loads and I've got a really amazing cheat sheet. Oh, here I've got like 161, but I'm going to start with the back and I went ahead and um, so for this main part for the petals, this is brush number 151 and I went ahead and loaded that with color palette number three in the blue and in this kind of a pinky purple thing. So um, these color palettes, the thread palettes make it so easy to load them up. So I'm just going to go ahead and take that brush 151 and color palette three and here you can see this sort of thread brush. Um, but what we're going to do first is I'm going to go ahead to my styles and I'm going to go ahead and click thread one style. And I just have them saved right now for convenience in my tool presets. But normally you just grab like brush number 151 and then load it up yourself with the color palette number three. And so I think what I will do is I'm going to make the outlines first. So I'm going to make, let's see here. And now these are pressure sensitive. So they're going to be bigger, you know, you can go bigger to smaller here. And I think I'm going to put up the smoothing here because I want the smoothing to be like, um, the smoothing helps you to just make smoother lines. So let's just go here and make this little outline like so. That's fine. Good enough. We're going to call it good enough. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. And then if you notice, like depending on how you sample the colors, it's going to have like if you go from top to bottom, bottom to top, left to right, it might look different each way because of wherever you sample on the image. Here you can see the preview of what I've sampled. So this is good enough. I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer underneath that. And I'm going to take that same brush. Let's go ahead and add our thread style which adds a little bit of dimension and I'll add the thread style to every layer that I'm doing on here. And also um, I put everything on their own layer because that adds the dimension. You need everything really on their own layer um, because it adds a little bit of bevel and a little bit of drop shadow. So now I'm just going to fill these in and I'm going to go like back and forth here. And actually what I can do is I'm going to make the, the insides on two different levels so we get this dimensional effect. So what I'll do is I'll draw some brush strokes like this. That's fine. And then I'm going to make, and I'll do the same thing over here. 
so let's just go like that. Okay, that's good. Now what I'll do is I'll make a new layer below that and I'm just gonna add the thread style. I should just, what I'm gonna do now is I'll just copy the layer style. I have it saved as a keyboard shortcut. So for me, I have it Command Shift C, copy layer style, and then I'll paste layer style because I'm using the same layer style in all of them. And now I'll just go and like do the opposite direction and fill that in. And I won't worry if that one's a little bit thick there. But now we've kind of got that like sort of dimensional sort of effect that we were getting over here. So we're gonna do the same thing with the blue. So we're gonna make a new layer, paste that layer style. And now I'm going to go to my tool presets and this one I have it loaded up with the blue. So we've got that wonderful um, blue loaded in there. So let's just go ahead and mm -mm -mm. I think I'll put the blue below the pink purple. So we're just gonna go here and do the, oh wait, you know what? I don't even need to do this here. I just wanna have that sticking out like so, and like so, and let's do the last bit. Okay, good enough. Um, so let's do the same thing. So I'm gonna make two new layers underneath. I'm going to paste the layer style on both of them. And let's just do some strokes like this. That's good. I'm ready. Okay, like so, like so, like so. And then the put, go to the layer underneath it and then maybe do the opposite direction so you're gonna get a little bit of a different um, color and see that, uh, little bit different there, so that's good. All right, we're good, we're good, we're good. So we've got that nice sort of um, textured base. This looked a little bit funky, but we're gonna just go with it. Now let me go ahead and save my file. And, okay, there we go. So now we're gonna add the accents. We've got the pedal and I've got a janky little thing here, but whatever, we're not gonna worry about it. So let's make a new layer. I'm gonna go ahead and paste the layer style on there. And then I'm gonna start with, this is brush number 79 and I loaded up a pink from palette three and here you can see what I've loaded up in there. Really cool little um, sort of a knit sort of brush. So now I'm just gonna make some things going out from the center here and I feel like my Wacom tablet, my Wacom tablet has like, the pressure sensitivity has changed a little bit. So I just wonder if I need to like recalibrate that because it feels like maybe more sensitive than it used to. I don't know if they just like randomly sort of um, change, but that's weird. It hasn't, I haven't really felt any difference in the, the pressure sensitivity, but I feel like something's changed in that. Okay, so that's fine. We're gonna just say good. We've got a little bit of that drop shadow. Um, you can also play around with thread on the dark background. It has a little bit less of a shadow, but I think it's fine. I'm gonna stick with the regular. I use most of the time thread one. It's kind of my go-to. So I'll make a new layer, paste the layer style. And this one is brush 78. And I used a light blue from palette number one. And if you wanna see about sampling them, you just go over to the palette. I go to like layer one, I option and click to sample inside this area. And then, you know, you can have it, then you can load up. But I, the, the um, texture palette is just really magic. And I make it so fun and fast for you to just create and just like have so much fun with that. So I'll just throw in some of these stitches here and you know wherever we want they don't have to be so perfect but i think that looks cool kind of want to put them against some of the dark so that kind of pops off there and we're just adding some i wonder if my because i just uh traveled and i wonder if just like traveling and knocking my whack home or something has made it like a little funky that's kind of weird. Okay, so that's fine. I put those stitches in there. We're happy with that. 
Let's make one more layer, paste that layer style. And here we've got brush number 91 and I've loaded it up with color palette number four. And the same thing, we can just, wherever there's some space, throw in a little stitch here. But I think it looks cool, so. And if you have any questions, just let me know down below in the comments. And then of course you can always reference that the um, my foundation video but one of the things that i run into with these is because i'm so used to having like color palettes already made from images for my other brushes sometimes i'm struggling with picking out colors for my embroidery stuff so maybe i'll do a tutorial on that to like um give you guys some ideas because it's something that i actually kind of struggle with and let's make one more layer, paste the layer style. And then this is um, brush 29 and I've loaded it with color palette number seven. And now this one's just off to the side. So you could just do whatever you like, but I thought it was kind of nice to add a little sort of stitch here. So I just went like so, we're fine. Make a new layer, paste layer style and this brush, I like it. It's brush number three, color palette number 10. You can really get really like gorgeous texture going on there. You can just see that texture that you can't get any other way. Um, it's so much fun. All right, so let's go back over here and take that brush and let's see here. You don't wanna go if you go clockwise, it's going to make something like that. Maybe you like it, but if you go counterclockwise, then it's going to make like a little, or just, you can't really see it so much there, but it's like this um, counterclockwise. So we can get that little like stitches coming out from the center. So I'll make a little counterclockwise. That's good enough. So there we go. So I think that is all the stitches that we have. Yes, 29, did I have any other ones? No, that's it. That's brush three, palette 10. And um, again, if you're a Behance subscriber, I'll have, um, I'm gonna save these loaded ones that are already loaded for you. So you can just kind of have fun, look, have fun with those and put, um, go along with the tutorial a little bit faster. <laughs> Excuse me. And what else? Oh, one thing that's always good to play around with is I've got the background with that fabric layer style on it. But it's really fun to play around with different backgrounds. And that way you can kind of experiment with like different colorways and how it would look. Um, it's just really fun to kind of play around with that. I like kind of some of the neutral, but you know, you can just really do a lot of different things. Excuse me, I have hiccups now. And so I like just doing like this and picking the colors and then maybe even doing like pale, seeing how it looks on dark, seeing how it looks on light and just having some fun with that. But you know, you could take this motif that we've created and you know, you could do whatever you want with it. So, you know, you can duplicate it, put it on the side and make like some sort of floral invitation or some artwork or something like that. And it's really fun and it just really gives you a lot of freedom even, you know, you can do things that you really maybe wouldn't do in real life, but that's inspired by embroidery. So that's a lot of fun. And yeah, just let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments and what else. And then if you're a Behance subscriber, I'll have the link down below. You can download my source files and the brushes loaded up and yeah. And then you can get the embroidery brushes on creatorscouture.com. So make sure you're subscribed and I will see you on my next tutorial.